Hello, welcome to GUI and in web browsers. Weekly call, it's 13th of November, 2019. I'm this week joined by Dietrich and Hack, and we will jump straight to our agenda. Agenda for today, we will talk about a web UI test suite, then um, about browser design workshop, which will happen probably this week. Uh, this week we'll share some updates on Chrome Dev Summit and we'll discuss what happens next week during the lab week. Uh, all right. Um, Web UI test suit. I've added it, so it's my fault. All right, so uh, long story short, um, there's a, an objective this quarter to improve test suite of web UI by sort of like clarifying um, when something breaks in end-to-end -end tests. And we sort of like wanted, this is, a, I, I wrote this, this perfect table of things I would love to see we tested in a perfect world when we all are ideal spheres. Um, so we would like to test uh, web UI, uh, like, let's say the basic test case that we want is adding files and directories to IPFS uh, using web UI interface. And we would like to ensure that core functionality does not break in Chromium, Firefox, and Electron. Electron is on the list because IPFS desktop is based on Electron and we render uh, web UI using Electron. Uh, renderer process. Uh, right now, uh, IPFS desktop runs uh, Go IPFS, uh, but like uh, people may run web UI against Go or JS IPFS in companion or on their own. If you install JS IPFS and you start it in daemon mode, it shows link to web UI. So we effectively ended up with this test matrix. And I finally got uh, to the point when I like, looked into how our current tests in web UI look like and how, mm, what's between where we are right now and this perfect, perfect world when we uh, have uh, this test matrix. And the, the, my initial idea was, oh yeah, we will just add Azure. Azure has a built-in uh, support for running against uh, those runtimes. So like, we run against Chromium, Firefox, and then Electron Renderer, uh, and we're golden. Uh, so the problem is, uh, so like adding Azure is not a problem. The node modules is already one gigabyte in size. And then if you add Azure, it's like 20, the, 200 uh, megabytes more. So it's like, in the past, I believe the difference was much bigger. And I remember the discussion when we've been talking about adding Azure, oh, it will make the node modules too big, but right now it's relatively to the current state, size of node modules. It's not a big, big problem. The problem is that Azure itself is a tool focused on, um, mostly uh, to improve uh, our velocity around developing uh, libraries. And that means it's very opinionated around that. Uh, it expects tests to be written in Mocha. And we run those tests using Karma in different environments. So we, we can run in Node, uh, but then we use Karma to run in Firefox, Chrome, and Electron. Uh, we use uh, that also to run in wor web worker environment. So we, ch we have separate tests for uh, a library to how a library works in regular web page when there's like a window object and then in service worker when there's like just like self stuff like that. Um, and that's Azure. The problem is in web UI, we don't use Azure. We use Jest for tests. And we have a proof of concept uh, for running Puppeteer, uh, for running end-to-end -end tests with Puppeteer. And that's sort of uh, semi-manual semi process. So that's um, 
the first problem, uh, Azure does not support libraries that we use in Web UI, so it's it's not a drop in replacement. So then I, I sort of like scr started scratching some, uh, uh, how would it look like if we refactor tests from like just to Mocha and then turns out most of people move in opposite direction from Mocha to Jest. Uh, so we not only don't have any community tooling that would help us in like transforming code or mapping, it would be like, uh, the cost of refactoring would be kind of big. Um, and then even if we switch to that, like Karma itself does not solve the end-to-end -end tests at the level we need. So we, we sort of need this granularity of Puppeteer, because like Karma itself, it just runs those like unit tests in a web, web browser context. But what we want, we need a Puppeteer to like orchestrate browser to go to a specific URL, to actually click on a specific object. And those days, uh, like historically there was Selenium, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure we, we don't want to go that route and uh, Puppeteer those days may be the only viable option. Seems that most of like high level libraries, I also like mentioned here, like Cypress and other libraries uh, are kind of built on top of uh, Puppeteer, just like historically were built on top of Selenium. Um, so that's like a trend I, I, I've saw, I saw and I feel uh, we probably uh, don't, uh, we are not very controversial by uh, sort of adding Puppeteer as a hard requirement for what we need uh, for this project. Um, so long story short, uh, from, the, from, from the current point, we can either move to like Mocha and Karma, but the problem is that does not solve the problem that we need to still add support to like Puppeteer. So we will either need to run Puppeteer somehow from a Karma or as a specific runner or something. Uh, basically, this sounds like uh, extending uh, Azure at some point because we don't want to like add additional layer. It feels like something closer to Azure. So then we could just say, okay, Azure actually does not help us with tests. Let's stay with Jest, and maybe we should simply improve our Puppeteer setup. So right now it just runs Puppeteer. Uh, so that means we just test against Chrome, Chromium, uh, and it's like semi-manual. But there are like tools for uh, both improving orchestration and improving. It gives us like the DSL for writing tests um, against Puppeteer without like using those low-level APIs directly. So there's like just Puppeteer project I found, uh, which so, so, sort of like bridges this gap between Jest, which we already use. And in the same style, we could write and send tests. And I, I started scratching this uh, uh, on local branch, but then uh, this call happened. So it, it may be something I will pick. Maybe, maybe Enric uh, will be interested in like seeing if it's a way to go. Um, but basically, if, if we go in, in this direction, we don't need to touch existing tests, like unit tests in Jest, that this would stay. Uh, the only thing we would improve is uh, this end-to-end -end setup, which we already have, but a very basic form. We would just extend that. And in the like, in first iteration, I, f I, I just want to get the puppeteer work. Uh, in a way that lets us run it against HTTP API exposed by Go or JS. And I believe uh, in tool like JS Puppeteer or, some, or something uh, like that, uh, we should be able to like, pass uh, if we want to run against Go or JS. Maybe that could be like IPFSD control uh, or other library, which we already have as a part of Azure. Maybe we could extend Azure and simply add support for Jest and Puppeteer. Uh, like in first iteration, we probably would just write it locally in, in Web UI, but I, feel, I really would like to think if we can uh, uh, backport this upstream to Azure because this uh, Puppeteer setup, I would probably, we, we would like that to reuse that for testing uh, web apps, like websites or web apps and GUI applications. Uh, 
so far, Azure was focused on libraries. That's why we ended up with Mocha and Karma, and that's perfect for like developing libraries. But the moment you need to test some end-to-end -end interactions, uh, then we need this puppeteer uh, capability. Um, so it's possible that from this, uh, we will simply contribute patches to Azure, and there will be an option to, to run uh, puppeteer that way. Uh, so the for, for initial version, I think we, we should just like see what we can do with Puppeteer. That will uh, test again Chromium, uh, but it's like 80% of market. So uh, pretty good for uh, like POC. And then uh, we can see what we can test with uh, Puppeteer Firefox and uh, there's Puppeteer Electron. Um, I'm not sure how viable uh, those are. I know like Firefox one has, implemented most of APIs. So we, we may need uh, to skip some tests uh, until uh, support uh, for specific API lands in Firefox, but I feel that's pretty viable. Um, so, so that's also this, uh, this version B, like this scenario B is also something I feel does not require us to invest as much time as alternative ones, because uh, if we go here, we need to like refactor tests without like any guarantee of success, or it's pretty hard to estimate if it's even worth it uh, to touch like mocha tests. We actually we effectively test only about end to end, right? And in C, like there are high like we can always later we can decide. Oh, actually, a lot of the stuff we want to write for B is already implemented by some other project. But I feel at this stage, we probably uh, would, should go with B. That would be my recommendation and try to uh, like basically improve Puppeteer setup and then maybe backport that to Azure. Um, I also like evaluated Azure uh, from the perspective of uh, make it easier for external contributors. Uh, by bringing both fam familiarity and keeping our code rules in check. So Azure not, not only is used for running tests, but there are also like built-in tools for checking bundle size, uh, reporting code coverage to external service, and also linter. Uh, Azure comes with uh, default uh, standard-based um, set of rules, which are also hardened uh, compared to the defaults. So I've ru I run uh, tests against uh, like web UI code base using Azure's rules and we got like 60, uh, like around 50 errors. So the, the, it's, the rules are a bit more strict. It's, it's mostly like cosmetic changes, but it keeps code base more aligned uh, with, like if someone starts contributing to IPFS, they, will uh, basically be required to follow similar uh, code practices. It's, those are sort of like cosmetic things we, we probably should not discuss right now, but I just mentioned that as uh, the only thing that would uh, be worth uh, for keeping uh, Azure in the project. Uh, if we decide to keep it, uh, we could reuse it for this and then if we decide to backport uh, like Puppeteer set, set up uh, to Azure, uh, that, then it makes sense to keep uh, Azure. But for now we can probably work on, on something like B without uh, relying on Azure. Um, and then I also looked at what, um, how would the running web UI from uh, JSIPFS test should look like? So uh, for a little bit of context, if you run um, CI of JSIPFS, uh, there's a special there's, there's a special uh, type of tests we run. Uh, we run JSI, we run external projects against a new version of JSIPFS, which is pretty interesting because you are able to test if your project is breaking some important third-party application. So here, uh, for example, we check, we run uh, IPFS companion tests uh, against uh, like JSIPFS uh, uh, re revision. Uh, I believe uh, 
you, you can see we can specify any command here. So it's not like this uh, test external command comes from Azure, but it's not like we need to use this. We could have our own command. So it's not like uh, switching to Azure or like using Azure for this is not a hard requirement. Actually, this command is used by Azure in JS APFS and it simply runs test command in specific uh, repo. So the only change we would have to do is to ensure if you are running in CI environment, run not only just tests, but also end to end. And that would effectively, uh, when you run test, just test command, right? And that would effectively give us this capability of running, uh, let's say, JS APFS against uh, web UI repo. Uh, more or less, I hope I did not uh, glance over too much and also did not bore you too much. If you have any questions or thoughts, I'd love to hear them. Thanks for the, the detailed walkthrough of the options and the scenario there. Uh, betting on Puppeteer sounds prudent. Uh, the goal in the Firefox development team is to support it fully and move to it for testing for a bunch of things. So that's a safe bet on that end. Um, yeah, it, it's a, it's a, it seems a priority from the yeah. work that they've been doing. Yeah. Uh, based on Chrome Dev Summit yesterday, Puppeteer came up several times and it is, consider their standard and then the side benefits are as you, as you said like not only do we get uh chrome support which is you know of course market heavy weight there but also any chromium based browser also will have puppeteer support built in so we get the uh, double double benefits there mm -hmm. um i had a question about how a, a lot of this you know the the plan that you talked about was about testing against the http api Mm -hmm. uh, how, what would a embedded node testing scenario look like in this situation? Oh, mm, mm, mm. yeah, so uh, a little bit of background is that right now, web UI, the only way web UI can communicate with IPFS node is over HTTP API. Historically, we, sub, we had support for window IPFS object exposed by IPFS companion, but we like removed that because it gave, uh, like it was sandboxed by default per origin and the web UI expected unsandboxed version. So it was easier to do some tricks around uh, course to, to simply run over HTTP than go through this like post message proxy uh, Rube Goldberg's machine uh, to achieve similar results. Uh, so long story short, Web UI requires uh, HTTP API. And when we run uh, JS IPFS in Brave, that embedded node is exposing HTTP API. So Web UI simply talks to, <laughs> Web UI talks to- Yes, it's uh, all coming back to me now. Yeah, Web UI talks to uh, embedded node over HTTP. Uh, which is probably not the best way to but, do it. But, but it means that in, for, the, for the purpose of answering my question, it means that nothing changes at all. Like, you don't, yeah, it'll totally, still totally. just use the HTTP. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. So long story short, if we test uh, web UI against JS IPFS, we effectively test uh, uh, embedded JS IPFS in Brave because it's the same, uh, Got same it. setup. So the so the only other question I had was can can you file an issue if uh, in Azure about puppeteer support so you're even whether we go that route or not the conversation is started and the idea is floated oh yeah, yeah. in that community so that we're kind of pre-flighting that possible need ahead of time oh yeah totally uh, it's something I would uh, want to pick uh, uh, Hugo's brain because. Uh, I'm not sure if he was around uh, uh, when the decision to like be very opinionated around Mocha and Karma happened. Uh, like those decisions make perfect sense for all the libraries we produce. It saves everyone ton of time, uh, including me. Uh, the problem is it was like the GUI applications, web applications uh, are not in the picture. And I feel 
we should also loop in the docs uh, working group into this discussion at some point because they will have some interactive elements on IPFSIO, on the docs IPFSIO, uh, maybe even proto school. Uh, when we like start do end to end testing and not just like unit tests for small chunks and components, uh, we probably then could leverage uh, the fact that uh, there's puppeteer support in Azure, right? Um, totally. So action item from this discussion. You can see I'm still on, the, on this super fast laptop when switching tab takes a few seconds. I uh, have that in the agenda for uh, lab week is to throw your laptop in the ocean. <laughs> uh, Maybe we can do a like a, you know, as the sun goes down on the beach. A little funeral, funeral ceremony. Like the like the Viking funeral when there's a boat and someone yeah. like puts a uh, flamey arrow. That would yes. be something. Yes. Yeah. We'll see what we can arrange. Yeah, let's 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 do that. Um, yeah. So that's more more or less my thoughts. Uh, Enrique, I, I I've seen you you wanted to get an update. Uh, I I simply did not want to like pull request uh, this something like switching to Jess Puppeteer and all the other stuff without like synchronizing first. And uh, is this something you feel mm, makes sense? Or I I'm not, I was not around the discussions when uh, the Puppeteer setup happened. I believe Oli was around. Do you remember what was like the historical context for that? I don't remember. Like I know it was Oli. He, I think he he was the one who did the, the make made the first test. So okay, I don't so, remember any of that. All right. So probably Oli is another person we we should check in just to make sure we did not like miss any unknown unknowns around uh, around the setup but i feel like b based on what i've seen it, the puppeteer is a way to go uh the one we have right now is very like super lean manual we probably will need to add some like make it more generic uh but more or less uh, we probably will extend it going further um, all right um uh, Anything around test suit? Are we happy with the direction? Sound, sounds like there's almost a direction. But yeah. we still have, we have yet to determine that. Um, but I'm very happy with the view of the options that we have. And it sounds like, it sounds like we probably have a direction. Uh, so that's just very exciting. Yep. Once, once, once we have this stuff in place, we will sleep better at night. And we will spend our time on more fun stuff. Yeah, I would be super, super happy if we if we like added puppeteer as a third thing. Um, probably like just just the last puppeteer uh, to Azure because that would, uh, as I said, mm. I feel it may be highly reusable in our like websites and small like tools and if, all, all the GUI applications that will follow eventually. All right, uh, browser design workshop. Yeah, just a quick note about the invite that I sent out this morning uh, for two of you and uh, designer Jim Kosum, who is working with us to compile the uh, IPFS browser design guidelines. I uh, will spend a, about 45 minutes tomorrow morning running through just a, a quick uh, little exercise that he has for us to, so that, to make sure that he understands the perspective that we have as the developers of IPFS GUI products and projects uh, and that will help frame the research work that uh, he's doing over the next two months. So he started uh, earlier this week and we're hoping to hopefully get it done before the holidays. It some might need to be a little bit postponed past, but the goal is to have it done before December 20th. So that should be a short one. Uh, this next item on the agenda is also me. Uh, yesterday I went to Chrome Dev Summit uh, day two, 
I applied, I got rejected. Then at six o'clock Monday night, they're like, hey, do you want to come to day two? I'm like, okay, I guess I'll go. It's, you know, a, a short train ride for me, which is, uh, but, but it was good. I got to, um, I actually saw, uh, let's see. So I saw a, a couple of, of interesting things. Day two look at the screen that I'm sharing. Uh, this first talk in the morning was the one that I really wanted to go to. And this was Chris Wilson, a longtime web standards um, person, worked at Microsoft for many, many years, worked at Google for the last some odd years, uh, him and Yoav Weiss, the chairs of the YWCG. And, um, and they are, uh, Yoav is the basically like the uh, API gatekeeper for web API implemented in Blink. So this was a kind of deep dive talk into the process that, that Blink as a, as a rendering engine uh, uses to be able to test out new web APIs, uh, figure out what changes they're gonna make to the version of the web platform that they implement and ship. And all uh, an understanding of the different places where the conversations happen, how features uh, and future proposals are evaluated, and so, so uh, what the all the intent to emails things are. So um, it was it was nice to be able to have a broad perspective, like kind of end to end view of how they do that evaluation from beginning to end. This is really important for the work that we need to do. As eventually, if we get IPFS implemented into native support in Chromium, uh, this will be kind of thing where we okay, uh, what does it mean to be able to be on or off by default? What does it mean to be an origin trial? What does it mean to have an intent to implement or intent to prototype? Um, uh, as they're calling it these days. Uh, so having, having that view into how they're thinking about feature evaluation is really important in us being able to move the right levers to get our technologies into that place. We're, you know, as, as we know from a network stack and security and privacy paradigm, we're still pretty far away from the uh, uh, security model of the web today, but every little bit of visibility into how the decision making happens and where is, is an aid to our ability to move our goals forward. Uh, I think what, it, for me, the takeaways were uh, the plan to engage more strongly with both the W3C and the ITF, at least at a visibility perspective of the goals that we have as an organization, as PL, uh, in 2020 is even more, more important um, because we're going to be able to, we need to be able to create an environment where we can have a conversation about, about these use cases. The IPFS browser design guidelines will also help support creating that environment and having this conversation in 2020 that can uh, lead us to you know a post post twenty twenty possible native implementation that people can actually flip on, in, in someday in in bigger browsers. So that that was that was a really cool talk. Uh, that a lot of the rest of it was more web developer focused. Uh, the HTML done isn't done session was really good in that it uh, and these are all recorded so you can watch them. I don't know if the videos are up yet, but it was good in that it it, it if you're not familiar with how long it can take to get change to happen in the web platform. Um, th uh, they're celebrating things like styling of form controls. And it's good, like it's, it's, some of these changes are hard to make and, and it's important that we do celebrate them as the web platform gets better for designers and developers. But at the same time, it's a really good illustration of how long it takes for things to happen. Uh, things like CSS Grid, all landed at once, and it's an example of where there was some coordination between browser vendors and making sure that a, a technology that was important and impactful was able to get to developers and designers' hands relatively quickly. But if you look at the history of that technology, it took about eight years all total. So um, we are we are not even really at the presentation stage of that with things like IPFS. Uh, but given the 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 strategic approach that we want to take, hopefully we can compress that in not, so we're not talking about IPFS and native browser, native and browsers in 2030, but instead more like 2022 or something like that. Um, but those kind of talks are great for getting, both of those talks were I think the best out of that day. I haven't watched the talks from the earlier the day um, for the prior day, but for, for understanding the kind of challenges that we're gonna face and the environment that we will be operating in, in getting uh, mass browser support. Uh, the Q and A with Chrome leads is probably also worth watching, if only to understand that Chrome is uh, at, at Google. Chrome is probably an organization of around a thousand or more, or something like that, all totaled. Uh, with uh, and 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 in that, uh, they also have uh, maybe some disagreements. They are a group of people that do or do not work together. 
same way that any organization, a group of people. So things things got a little spicy in the in the Q and A, uh, and so that that was worth walk, watching from that perspective. Also related to us was the ah this talk Chrome extensions in the world of tomorrow. And this is where Simeon presented their work on Manifest V3, and uh, by uh, by all accounts there was uh, almost no acknowledgement whatsoever that it was a thing that was controversial. Uh, instead, it was presented as a beautiful new future uh, with uh, uh, better performance and a user-centered attitude. So uh, it, it was good to be able to get the clarification that no, they're not backing down on V3. Yes, they are leaning in hard and you, they're right, we're all wrong, and users actually don't want ad blockers. Sorry, Lytle. <laughs> there, I, I, I did not expect to come back with good news from that session and not this I was like silently crying and forgot to mute myself. <laughs> uh, I also did have, so they had a, a browser, other browser row kind of thing with like Samsung and Edge and Firefox. And I did talk to the Edge folks and um, a little bit and they, it, I guess the, the most important piece of information that I got really, because it was more like Devrel, these are not like, it doesn't seem like these are not the web standards decision makers there. It wasn't the like, product managers or anything like that. Um, that if you're using Mac and you're testing Edge for Mac there, that you know, all the features, design, everything is exactly the same as on Windows. Uh, so from a front end perspective and from a, you know, understanding feature capability and things like that is uh, functionally the same. So, which was nice to be able to say, yeah, I can test Edge on Mac without having to run Windows and VM. Uh, it also means that from the browser design guidelines work that we're doing, we can uh, easily, we can look at, at that URL bar implementation as representative of their Windows implementation as well. That's pretty so that, cool. Simpli sim sim simplifies not only like, uh, not only companion, but also all, all our websites. Yeah. Uh, and this last item is me as well, which is Lab Week. Uh, Can I uh, get a, a plug related to Chrome Web Days? Uh, yeah. Oh gosh, it's, it's named something. Chrome Dev Summit? Right. Yep. Uh, I got a quick sort of like a piggyback. I'm not sure on which day it was, uh, but uh, we've been tracking signed slash bundled HTTP exchanges and web, web package development. There's an issue in IPFS in web browsers, if anyone is interested in details. I sort of like updated that. There's like, in 2018, we had signed HTTP exchanges, which was simply like one HTTP request, packaged, signed, and then you could load it. Uh, and it looks like it came from s s some origin, but that's a lie. And then uh, this quarter, uh, bundled HTTP exchanges, rebranded as web bundles which is pretty cool name uh, landed uh, so that's a group of resources bundled together and you can load like entire website from a file which has like a specific extension and mime type in chrome right now it requires passing a frag uh, there's a link to more details and there's a, a blog post uh, by kenji uh, it's like co-author. Uh, so if anyone is interested in like archival use cases mostly or like offline uh, use cases when you want to share like website to someone uh, over Bluetooth or something, there's a pretty cool demo when they share a game in HTML, JS and CSS over like Bluetooth between two phones uh, or, or like Wi-Fi direct or something. Uh, but I, I believe like those are interesting use cases because you can tell that there's a place for IPFS as a, like a distribution platform that's decoupled from like centralized services, CDNs and other stuff. And more thoughts and discussions and proof of concept by Jim uh, in this very long, long issue because we've been like tracking it since uh, 2018. And now uh, those like uh, web bundles finally it feels like it's polished enough to the point we can start thinking about bundling websites. And when that technology lands, 
and it will land. Right now it's like origin trial or behind the flag because it's like highly experimental, but within like six months or something, uh, it will be available in like a stable Chromium and that's like 80% of the market. So people will start using this. And the cool thing is that it will work on mobile as well. And like mobile is a very important part of the story. Um, so it's something I wanted to mention that happens. Uh, and that's it. Yes, the, the, I think the bundles is, is an inevitability at this point, at least, at least in, in, in Chromium. It, it was something, that, and I don't know if, I think they announced it and presented it on day one, but on day two it came up several times. Uh, and the interesting thing is that it's not really like a packaged app like the way an APK is, but as you say, it really is like a record and replay of HTTP transactions. And I think the challenge that they'll have is from a developer ergonomics standpoint, that seems awkward. And that's one of the challenges that, that I think that, that they've had so far is that they're, they're using that in order to be able to, to fit in seamlessly with the end, the farthest edge node of that browser's operational, uh, operationalization of the security model. Uh, like we don't have to change anything uh, in the browser. It's still a request response. It's just, fake <laughs> and, and and controversial part is that in bundles in those like web bundles uh, signing is optional yeah. and around signing that's uh, sort of like breaking guarantee around like http tls and yeah. that there are only two sides now you got a third side the distribution server which yeah. was like passing they, they did give us um these uh, offline asaurus with web bundles on them oh, wow. because because of there's of course you should trust a usb key for a stranger <laughs> who's the largest surveillance operation that humanity has ever known outside of the nsa maybe <laughs> well played <laughs> still still excited i'm still excited because like signing is optional so even if you are skittish about breaking like spoofing tls for like archival purposes, it's worth thinking about. Yeah. Or let's say Wikipedia and you want to, uh, right. all the citations, you want to like attach them to page when you edit it so they don't disappear, stuff like that. All right, should we move to the, move to the last item? Yes, uh, we don't tell where Lab Week happens, nor who. Antarctica. Antarctica. Like every, yes. like every year. Yes, it will be very cold. Yes. I got mine. And it's too, it's too bad that they, they separated all, us, all of us into separate camps, so we're not even going to see each other in person there. We're all in different coasts of Antarctica. We'll have walkie-talkies. It'll be nice. It'll be like Zoom, but without the camera. Just Morse code. Uh, while we are all separate on these frozen wastelands of Antarctica and camps alone and sad, is there any specific goal that we want to come out of that week with? Any specific hack project that we would like to do? We've talked about this a couple different times. Uh, do we want to come out with, say, a, a, a clear decision about the test framework? approach would probably be good because we'll have Asian people and other people uh, in the same general uh, vicinity. Well, I was <laughs> going to say that that half of the planet, the same hemisphere. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I see like uh, I, I, I would have two proposals. One is to get like the GUI team. Uh, Browser, GUI browser team, uh, Azure, and also like docs, uh, which are responsible for like websites and maybe proto, proto school as well, because it's uh, also a website. And uh, see uh, how can we do end to end testing of those websites. I imagine there will be some puppeteer thingy. Uh, but uh, we probably should, it would be very useful to gather more use cases than like web UI because web UI is super specific. Um, and uh, like encourage people to, 
to, to contribute to, to this work. Another thing is maybe it's unrelated to test soup, I know, but it's something, yeah. Be before you move on then, so related to the testing, yeah. uh, I guess I would, I'm, wor I'm worried that we start to boil the ocean at that point. Are too many cooks all boiling the ocean together? Just limit to edge, to edger, just. Yeah, or like the, the fact that, because web UI has special needs, it is yep. not a regular website. So I guess I, would, I, I would just want to throw out there that trying to bundle those together because they are very different. Uh, if we hit a wall there, let's be very aware of that and make sure that our primary goal of making sure that understanding where JS and Go IPFS changes break web UI and vice versa and companion and vice versa, mm -hmm. that's our primary goal here. Uh, yep. Maybe there is a side effect of Puppeteer in Azure that helps general website testing for people developing websites at regular HTTP websites at PL, but they seem to be different enough that I want to make sure that the one doesn't block the other. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a valid point. Yep. Um, and like the second thing uh, is uh, sort of like picking up research made on pinning UX made by uh, Michelle. Uh, Michelle departed the uh, project, moved to the Collab com community, but uh, generally there's a lot of material she created uh, in collaboration with me, Hector, and others um, on sort of like she made a very good pass at State of the Union of pinning uh, across all our GUI applications, projects, not only like IPFS, but also cluster, because like pinning means so, sort of has a specific language and meaning in cluster and that's sort of a different meaning in vanilla IPFS. And then we got our GUIs, which sort of not always follow what low, lower levels uh, do. Um, and that's more, uh, could be interesting an uh, exercise in alignment to, to come up with a plan how to remove those uh, differences, which are sort of like a heavy, sometimes, sometimes as those are really heavy blockers for newcomers to the project. When people add stuff to, to IPFS from command line and they don't see them in web UI, or they add the same file from command line using add and files write, and they get different CIDs. That's also kind of related to the proposal of files v2, um, but only in the, in the fact that that proposal comes with some very good uh, naming conventions and the new language, which we could reuse before even adopting that standard. But let's say switch UI from, like remove pinning as a word from UIs and simply like, you don't upload to IPFS, you just import stuff to your node. And that's re very important because up, upload suggests it's like pushed to some third party server, right? It's not true, you import it to your local node. And unless someone requests that data from you, it's only on your local node. Th like things like that. Not sure if I'm uh, very coherent in like communicating what I mean, but generally extracting next steps from this uh, pinning research. And I feel those steps would be pr like pretty simple, but we need to like coordinate across both command line, Go, IPFS, JS, IPFS, uh, as, as a GUI and, and in your browsers, just to simply uh, either change the language or update the docs. Uh, things like there's a, a PR contributed by Colin uh, to IPFS companion to instead of like adding and pinning to IPFS, simply like import file to web UI, to MFS and show it in the web UI. And that's removed a lot of cognitive overhead. Um, so generally maybe that could be like a campsite discussion more than actual design session, but would be useful to make, have this discussion in, in, in that like unconf uh, set up maybe. Can, can I, I, I agree. I would love to be able to, we have enough and we might have enough people with shared interests in separate places uh, far apart from each other to be able to have a right conversation about that. The, can you link to any of those assets if they're if that work as public at all? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it would be great to have in the notes so that people can reference it. Seems like something we probably want to share in the right oh, places. Totally. And I'm, drop, I'm dropping it. Uh... 
following the, call, the Colin Fruit issue around um, adding file directly from web UI to MFS, uh, you know, you thought there's a, a long history of design thinking around uh, this, the, the various places where we have functionality exposed and the language that is used. It, it years worth of design thinking, and it would be great to be able to have some conclusions. Yeah, yeah, and it feels mostly because um, there were more important things and time passed and now it's actually a problem that we don't have this coherent language around some basic concepts such as keeping stuff around. We have pinning, uh, implicit pinning, like MFS, other stuff. Um, found a resource, I'll drop it in, uh, in the notes. Uh, there's an uh, entire issue of work done by megahertz, but I believe like the last comment has a sort of like summary, links to summary documents. Uh, there's a PDF of uh, uh, all the work she did. So I believe like maybe I'll also link the PDF directly if someone is not uh, cool very patient. Yep. We uh, so I said the, those two things alone would be great for Lab Week, and I'm sure other things would will come up. Uh, specifically, uh, testing Opera builds in person will be fun, especially mm -hmm. in a, a local network together. Uh, maybe against local gateways should be. Pretty interesting. Uh, but uh, I added two more quick things. I know we're really running out of time here, and this was going to be the short, short one. As always. Um, uh, we should probably close up. Thanks for adding, thanks for time boxing the uh, awesome IPFS policy issue. I oh, should take a look at that and, and close it out and add a PR. Uh, so I'll add that to my list to take a look at. Um, and then, do we have any highlights to add? Anything released this week? Anything that we want to share? with the team next week. I believe uh, there was a companion release. Uh, I'll add it to the list. Excellent. And there will be uh, the, yeah, there will be probably a stable tomorrow or on Friday. Um, but yeah, I'll either drop it to this week's or next week's comments. Um, uh, Enrique, do you know if we can release new web UI with that fix for multi others? Uh, it is released. I've pushed the uh, PR to companion. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so I probably, uh, yeah, I'll make another beta and then push that to stable channel. Because background on that is that uh, I was not able to switch to new web UI because um, the Pure page did not display uh, peers with uh, WebSocket, Star, multi others, because uh, no one actually ever had to load Web UI with those peers, because it never, because you were not able to load Web UI in, with embedded JS IPFS in web browser, until we did that in Brave. So that's pretty pretty interesting. That surface those kinds of bugs. Uh, yeah, so that's fixed. I'll probably release a new companion with new version. That way, uh, Brave users will have a new web UI. Yep. I think that's it. Seven minutes early. Yep. Oh, okay. So uh, still two mi more minutes to give a quick update on Wikipedia project. Um, Oh gosh, let me, do I? Uh, or maybe next week, that's a better idea. There, there will be no next week. Stay tuned. <laughs> week, after, week after week after next week, because there will probably not be one of these week after next week either, because several of us will be out of the office. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Last week there's a lab week, and then we I, I'm taking a week off. Uh, and me as well. Week, yeah. All right. Uh, the teaser for Wikipedia is that we will be switching the snapshot generation from our custom Rust-based code 
to upstream tools uh, from OpenZine project. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> See you in December. See you in December.